Nate Diaz finally gets the send-off he was looking for for years. He fought out his long contract and now is hinting at probably going to boxing as he says that he's going to show everybody how it's done to conquer another sport that likes of Conor McGregor could not do. And he did it after becoming the first fighter to ever submit Tony Ferguson in a fight. There's a lot of things we can say about this fight that I'll mention later in the video, but at the end of the day, it was kind of like a happy, sad fight. I was very happy to see two legends, old-time veterans going at it. Two guys have been in the same division for so many years and never got to fight each other. They ultimately went out there and had some fun. That's what it really felt like. It felt like Nate Diaz and Tony Ferguson were just going in there to have fun, make the money, and in Nate Diaz's case, finally move on. They were laughing at the octagon they were showboating a lot they were doing a lot of crazy stuff out there and that is a thing i'm very happy to see from both these guys they finally got something that they've been asking for and by whatever you want to say luck the mma gods or whatever control of the situation landed in both of their hands where for many many years tony ferguson and nate diaz have been greatly disrespected by a lot of people and it just feels good that they were able to go out there for our main event big pay-per-view and put on a show for all of us fans. Now, the sad thing about the fight was, I'm gonna be honest, they did not look that great. Nate definitely looked better than Tony. That's for sure. Nate actually was fighting very similarly, like always. He had a dynamic one-two combo. He put on the vintage volume on Tony Ferguson. That is something I thought I would never say. He had the check right hook there. Tony was lunging in with a lot of punches, and Nate was starting to get the timing of those. And like always, Nate showed to be extremely durable, very tough, took all those leg kicks. He's probably not going to be walking in the morning. And Tony was hammering him shin to shin, which is interesting, because you don't normally want to kick someone's shin. But Tony's been really drilling, kicking metal poles and stuff like that. His shins are probably extremely conditioned but his left did get cut open a bit but it seemed like not to bother him the saddest thing about the fight and everybody was pointing it out tony looked old in this fight and it might not just be the age people forget he just got knocked out like five months ago viciously for the first time in his career you can't expect tony to come back in prime form even the tony we saw in the first round against michael chandler there was no way we were going to see even that version of tony in this fight someone who's like running away turning his back the whole time laughing the whole fight trying to touch gloves trying to be buddy buddy with nate or what about him tapping to the guillotine? Whereas before when he fought Charles Oliveira, his arm was about to break and he still refused to tap. But in this one, he taps from a choke, which is not necessarily dangerous. It was just so unlike Tony Ferguson. Not taking advantage of openings. There were many of those throughout the whole fight. There were even moments where he stopped kicking the legs and he started to play with Nate's antics more. And even after the fight, it seemed like he didn't care at all that he lost. He's on a five loss streak. That is crazy and tony usually would be upset not only with losses but even some of his wins he was very hard on himself always it looks like tony ferguson has really hit a point in his career where he's just happy to fight it seems that competitive spark that competitive fire is just not there anymore as he was one time known as one of if not the best lightweight on the planet and now he just doesn't fight the way he used to it might be that his body's kind of in shock from that knockout still. He just reacts that way, turning away from punches and stuff. And even his techniques were very different. I mean, the spinning elbows were there. That is something he usually throws. The kicks to the leg were there. But then again, everybody could throw leg kicks at Nate Diaz and look good. His boxing form was just completely foreign to what he usually does. And he's been at boxing gyms, right? But it looks like it has regressed. He was winging telegraph punches from a distance and way overextending. And there's no way you're going to hit someone like Nate like that. Nate's a pretty good boxer. And he pulled away from like every single one of those punches. So like Tony's techniques were very foreign to what we're usually seeing from him. But Nate's were not. Nate had the same exact techniques and punches and all of that. The only difference with Nate was he was much slower than he used to be. You could definitely see that both fighters have aged in this fight. Watching the fight again, you could definitely tell how slow it was. Like the punches, the movement, everything was very slow in comparison to the other fights on the card. And someone helped remind me of it. This fight very much felt like Anderson Silva vs Nick Diaz. Where it was two veterans, two guys that were clearly out of their prime. Just looking to put a show on there for the fans and just make money. Now of course we also do have to mention that they both did not prepare for each other. But it's not necessarily the game plan or the tactics that people are talking about. It's more about... The techniques, like the speed of their punches, the form of their punches, that doesn't change with the opponent. Jab is a jab, a right straight is a right straight. Round leg kicks are round leg kicks. The way that Tony was specifically throwing his strikes were much slower than ever before and much different than ever before. 
The biggest success that Tony had in the fight were definitely the leg kicks. I mean, he was slamming that leg, but oftentimes went away from it. And whenever Nate turned around and was kind of showboating, the old Tony Ferguson would have 100% capitalized. He would 100% attack Nate Diaz. And it just seemed like he wanted to be part of the show. He just wanted to have fun out there with Nate. And I don't fault him at all for that. But just as a Tony Ferguson fan who saw the best of him, it was kind of sad to see, I'm not going to lie. The fight was exciting as well as pretty sad to watch. Because you realize that these two guys are nothing like they used to be. They're clearly over the hill. They're clearly past their prime. But the difference is Nate Diaz didn't take as much damage that Tony did. Tony's been TKO. Tony's been knocked unconscious. Tony's been dropped many times. He's coming off a fresh knockout loss. Nate Diaz's last fight was Leon Edwards and he never got knocked out. He never got dropped. He took some shots, but definitely has a healthier brain than Tony. And ultimately, this fight seemed to pretty much come down to that. Who was the quote-unquote younger fighter in there? The fresher guy who made better decisions in their careers. And at the end of the day, it was Nate Diaz. Just like he said in the post-fight interview, Nate did it better than anybody else. I don't agree with this necessarily, but he says he did it better than anybody else when it also came to surviving. Nate was really only finished one time in his career against Josh Thompson, which was a long time ago. Most fighters that exit the sport have been knocked out. Thankfully, it has never happened to Nate, and that is why you saw those vintage combinations from him, even overwhelming Tony Ferguson, which is something we would have never have thought. Someone overwhelmed Tony with output, the king of aggression. But what's next for these two? Well, it looks like Nate Diaz might go to boxing, and we're going to have to keep our eye on Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva, because if Jake wins, Nate might be his next opponent. Other than that, I don't know what else Nate Diaz is looking to do. And as for Tony Ferguson, I was hoping he would retire after that fight. And thankfully, he did not fight Li Jing Liang. Imagine how that would have turned out. So in a way, you can say that Nate Diaz and Tony Ferguson dodged a bullet from fighting Hamza and Li Jing Liang. And it just further proves that the younger guys are here to take over. Nate and Tony had their time in the sport, even though the leech is not that young. These guys are younger than them. Tony is like that Chuck Liddell figure, like those older legends that are still fighting and for him specifically because he's like the only old guy right now still fighting him and like Robbie Lawler they need to really ask themselves some questions here because the last thing we want to see is Tony on a six fight loss streak getting knocked out again or submitted again and just not be able to compete with anybody on the roster because the guy's losing in new ways that he's never lost like before first time getting knocked out in his career first time getting submitted in the UFC five fight loss streak What's next? And I know he was talking about that he would be the guy to take Habib out of retirement, but that is not happening, man. Especially now, it's a done deal. If he had any chance of bringing Habib back, all of those are gone now after Habib watched Tony Ferguson get submitted by Nate Diaz. At least Nate Diaz is moving on doing something else. But yeah, I don't know what else is left for Tony. Maybe him versus Robbie Lawler, perhaps? Unless he gets the Conor McGregor fight, but if he fights this way against Conor, I think Conor knocks him out. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to like the video and make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.